Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Future Friday, we're going to talk about sodium ion battery. And I cannot tell you how many times I got the request to do this. Well, first we have to understand what we are talking about. We are talking about a different chemistry that is surprisingly similar to lithium ions system. Only the charge carrier is in, in no longer lithium, it's sodium instead. That's the main point, sodium ion batteries. And it has same working system. What does that mean? That means the packaging can be the same. Now, this is a very critical aspect. For example, there are many power systems. I have made a whole playlist about it. Uh, but some of them have amazing properties. However, they have very weird uh, systems, including flow cell battery quite amazing quite long lasting here's deal it has a liquid so what does that mean that inherently means you can in designing a car you have to design a completely different fluid system how it will affect when you are cornering and all that that becomes a hell of a hassle uh, let's talk about thermal batteries same issue it's a molten thing you really don't want to be in a car in an accident when there is a freaking molten uh, carbon and silicon mixture uh, you know behind your seat or below your seat so you have to understand packaging is a very important aspect it must match the packaging that we have already learned uh, all auto manufacturers they had to relearn many things because again combustion engine systems we have been experiencing with this like for around 100 years so we know how that puppy works it's like okay this is how we're we gonna put the engine this is how it's gonna act in a crash in lithium ion we had to relearn all that but if you change the packaging we have to relearn again which will slow down adoption so designing a technology that allows you to have awesome features while making sure the packaging is exactly the same it's critical it's no longer just like uh, you know it will be nice if it matches no it would be necessary like unless you want to every car company to redesign everything that's the whole point so packaging remaining the same it's very useful and very environmentally friendly so you do not have to retool every damn thing every damn way every damn time so that is why it's so enticing so uh, specifically speaking now how does it work well at this point in time the main def uh, definition you're gonna get is basically sodium is the charge carrier now why people are saying that one simple reason anode and cathode are no longer standardized because again many labs are working and it's a current in development technology so some people are in, in cathode they are using aluminum some people are using carbon some people are using different types of anodes some people are using different mixtures some using different alloys it's no longer uh, standardized as when I say lithium ion, I mean lithium ion. You can easily type lithium ion, get the chemistry, and it will be similar with uh, basically Samsung, LG, Panasonic. They will have a different blend, but core architecture will remain the same. This is not the case with sodium ion because, again, it's very early stage, so to say. It's still in the lab. But the main difference, you have to think about it. Like, if you can understand lithium ion, it's exactly the same. And uh, there used to be a uh, basically sodium metal battery. The reason why that did never took off is simply because sodium is much heavier so inherently people want to use this it does have lower voltage be mindful of that per cell wise it has lower voltage that's the working of it now what's the logic behind it well as more and more people start to buy electric cars and again electric car adoption rate is not skyrocketing but it is growing and it is going to a point where people are like to sooner or later petrol will become so expensive that we are like yeah i don't want to deal with this and there are secondary benefits of electric car which my personal favorite one is less noise pollution noise pollution is really bad for people like there are places in uh, you know europe which has almost 100 percent electric cars and people are just happier about this why less noise pollution nobody gives a damn about environment but every Tom, Dick and Harry gives a damn about their noise pollution. So having a car that inherently does not make too much noise, it's awesome. So uh, people are slowly realizing that sooner or later every Tom, Dick and Harry is going to buy an electric car. So expand, uh, like uh, if uh, people extrapolate, it's like, okay, this many cars we have, this many batteries we need. We are like, yeah, it's going to be very expensive because right now it's no longer in mass production. Days. It's like we are trying to become mass producible. And that's the whole point of Tesla Giga factory. It's like every Tom, Dick and Harry is building the foundation that will allow mass production. We are not there yet. We are mass producing, but here's the deal. There are many Toyota uh, car factories that mass produces cars on the same rate as uh, other companies produce as cells. So let that sink in. Like we are not there, uh, not in a position where we can say, oh, lithium ions are mass produced same rate as other things in our day to day life. So when you extrapolate at that level, it's like I'm gonna mass produce like, you know, 100 car per day, uh, you know, in multiple factories, then they are like, yeah, at that point, lithium is way too expensive. So lithium ion inherently use multiple expensive things. One of them is lithium. Now here's the irony of that. Lithium is not the most expensive part. The most expensive part is cobalt. And cobalt is ludicrously rare and it also has conflict status to it. So basically you cannot just, oh, I'm gonna buy a cobalt. And you cannot know as a company whether it's a clean cobalt or not. Clean means politically conflict uh, and all that dirty jazz which we do not like to talk about. So 
inherently people don't want to deal with that not only it's a pr nightmare it's a inherent uh, risk in your supply chain because again what happens if another uprising happens or uh, the cost changes you have to give uh, like you know cost certainty for years you cannot be like okay i'm going to be uh, buying supplies from this mine for next 5 years and then price change randomly in the you know middle half because humanitarian aid happened you have to you know you need clean source where you can trace the whole uh, like you know basically till the where the source is coming from that's a very necessary for long term success not for short term one but for long term it's necessary so lithium and cobalt both of them have lot of uh, that dirty aspect on top of that recent uh, pandemic touches the world that relying on one single source it's really dangerous it really cripples you on very horrifying ways that people are like yeah let's make sure we are independent for that reason even if cost is not too ludicrous people are like yeah it, it i will be much safer in long term if i buy a bit more expensive from my own country so logic has multiple layers to it it's no longer just like ah it's cheaper or better no it's like long term game now cost cost i keep talking about cost why it's such a important deal well because this technology allows uh, multiple layers of cost reduction primary of which it uses the same infrastructure that is the most uh, amazing aspect of this sodium technology because again you can make some amazing technology in lab it happens almost every you know every other tuesday so to say but to make that awesome technology into a real technology that stays in your hand and you use it day to day life it takes what i call mass production mass production requires what i call infrastructure infrastructure every time you have to change the infrastructure it will bankrupt you and not to mention we have just uh, recently changed the infrastructure to go from uh, basically internal combustion systems to uh, battery power system that required a whole drive train to be redesigned with uh, modern crash safety standards and all that jazz that costed a lot of money like for a given example there are many electric cars that were sold to the market at a loss knowing full well the company will never recover it and only thing they are hoping for is like yeah over time over 10 15 years we going to recover on you know 20th model or 30th model so that is the reality of it so people do not like the idea of changing the infrastructure it simply could not be changed like it's imagine it this way like every another month somebody came up with a different audio format for your mobile uh, basically for your media kind of you like dude I, i'm not touching this so same using the same infrastructure actually it makes it possible where it's like hey tesla has a giga factory can they change from lithium system to sodium system short answer yes with agar they have to tune it but they have to use the same hardware as they use right now so it's something that you can sell to someone hey use this instead of that and you don't have to do too much about it you like yeah, okay i'm interested so that's one primary cell point primary cell like if you take a, like how many uh, basically uh, flow cells batteries are made the biggest companies like yeah we sold 100 piece that's the whole point you have to make sure the infrastructure is exactly the same because establishing infrastructure takes years then we use sodium instead of lithium again price competitiveness here is like a very basic it's like ludicrously cheap versus ludicrously expensive then we come to the another aspect because of the how uh, sodium ions behave they really do not like copper apparently they like aluminum more than copper now what does that mean that inherently means you can make your material cheaper instead of copper you have to use aluminum and you will get more power out of it that's like double whammy and then no cobalt needed like if you actually went down to the core level or core chemistry level everything required for a sodium ion battery from start to finish uh, and talking about the cell not about the casing you can make the casing out of a uh, again uh, you can make it out of aluminum or you can make it out steel depending on your requirement if you want to lightweight or you want stronger that's up to you but if you went up like to the last level it's like it uses sulfur it uses carbon it uses aluminum it uses a uh, sodium so all those things are inherently inherently there is nothing you know mystical or something that requires a ludicrously complicated recycling system so it's inherently cheaper that's why this multi layer cost reduction is so enticing to people it's like wow it can actually change things now i would advise serious amount of caution against hype hype is one of the worst thing happened to this humanity in this timeline basically uh, because you have to understand when i say lead acid battery i know for a fact that you know what that bit means that there is a good chance you know that your car has a battery that is lead acid battery there is a good chance you have a ups which has lead acid battery you may live in india you may have a inverter which has giant lead acid battery or you may work in some uh, like, you know data center which has like freaking room full of lead acid battery how the heck lead acid battery became so successful we have been using it for 150 years that was the first battery we used for electric cars so to say yes electric cars came before uh, internal combustion system so amount of learning we gained from uh, we gained from basically lead acid allowed us to make better decisions basically lead acid actually taught us like all batteries can catch on fire yes because lead acid has hydrogen leaking problem 
because inherently you are causing electrolysis to water uh, it's not a good thing so we learned how to deal with that then we had lithium ion we even in lithium ion if you type like first lithium ion you'll get a result around 19 uh, 98 1992 first commercial cell something like, like that but here's the that's not the first lithium ion cell first lithium ion will sell being made at least 20 years before that in a lab because you have to understand it making something in a lab versus making something that is commercial making something that is commercially viable that's a huge step it's like einstein made a, a equation for laser 40 years after that somebody made an actual laser 40 years after that somebody made something amazing for example your cd barcode scanner and all that jazz it takes time it's not something that is like Ta-da, in lab in your life today again because of our advancement in everything and not to mention we have already experienced with lead acid nickel cadmium systems and uh, lithium ion system we have learned a lot and those inherently helps us to like you know iterate much faster but it still takes time and it's not in years it's in decades you would be ludicrously lucky if the technology that you are seeing right now let's say in 2020 actually reaches market before 2025 you will be ludicrously lucky and this technology might actually do that because of the infrastructure uh, similarity but again still i would not hope of hope now lab is not real world even if a company inherently that goodness of their heart they're like dude we have to test this thing out we want to throw everything at it and like be damn sure that it works the real world still can throw something that you do not know expect for example uh samsung fold actual machine actual folding day in and day out it worked everything flawlessly the moment they send it to real world is like yep it's a garbage so reality happens it's a something that you have to be thoroughly aware of that even if they, you put everything best intention and all that it's like real world is like bro what the hell you're doing and another aspect media youtube and all things like that they run on hype so they will over hype things to a point where it becomes absurd it's like yeah this battery will change everything this battery will make you uh, independent this battery will be cheaper this battery will be this that yeah nope it takes time be calm about this and one core aspect devil is always in the detail for example it was very hard for me to find out that actual uh, everything is amazing about sodium ion battery it lasts longer and all that until i realized it actually has lower cell voltage now like why that's a big deal that inherently means the voltage potential of per cell is lower that means you do not have the same energy density it's lithium ion is still more denser than this so can you compensate for that yes there are so that's why people are working on different uh, anode and cathode design to actually exceed the ampere capacity they can't increase the voltage but if they can increase the ampere that would be hope hopeful but that's the whole reality of it that was the hidden detail so like that there is a lot of uh, you know devil hidden in the details in the real world so you have to be mindful of stay away from the high be calm it's like it takes time so be calm now what we can expect in the future well there are many chemical options in the future many chemical brands so to say so for example in lithium you have multiple options for example lithium ion lithium polymer lithium titanate lithium iron phosphate now does that all make any sense short answer yes there are different cells for different types for drills generally lithium ion is used for car lithium ion is used for lab, uh, basically a mobile phone lithium polymer is used for uh, let's say you want to make a satellite you will use lithium titanate if you want to make something like let's say home inverter home power scenario you will use lithium iron phosphate why is cheap and best and does not catch us on fire and you want really awesome thing like let's say electric bus you will use lithium titanate why it can charge in 15 minutes why it has c rating of three and like as in like it will have three thousand cycles of uh, charge and discharge if you are doing at c3 c3 simply means uh, c1 means one hour charge c2 means 30 minutes charge c3 means 15 minutes charge side effect the batteries are huge that's why it's suited for bus not suited for cars it's huge the battery is like almost the same size as a lead acid battery so you can see like different blends allows us to extract different properties for some scenario you want hey i'm gonna put this battery pack in my uh, truck or in my vehicle and i will forget about it basically at the end of its life basically all the chassis when i have to uh, scrap i will just scrap the whole chassis i will don't have to think about like it wouldn't it be beneficial to swap the battery you do not want to do that so lithium titanate will allow that but for cars that's not well suited so different chemistry option will give you different pros and cons same will happen with sodium also some sodium mixtures will be like hey it's designed for long life it may not be efficient it may lose electricity but it's designed for working let's say 10 years or 20 years or 35 years for those sort of scenario you will have different blend then you will have another aspect where it's like hmm, i do not need that kind of oomph uh, basically longevity but i want the mm, like i want my subwoofer to go yolo uh, or for my car because all it has to do is start the starter motor you will go for a different blend that's the amazing aspect of it that's why i do not think like lithium will disappear it, it took us 50 years to get here you can be damn sure it's gonna stay here for a while 
then we come to the price aspect it will be 20 percent cheaper now at, at this point many of you will be like wait a minute didn't we remove almost all every expensive thing we didn't we use the same infrastructure why the heck is still only 20 percent cheaper now again 20 percent is worst case scenario i inherently hope it goes below 100 but the reality is whenever you are paying for something you're not just paying for the material you are paying for multiple architecture multi uh, multiple intellectual properties ips and um, patents and all that just you you really don't want to go on top of that you also have to make profit out of it so if you are using the same factory it's a giga factory you still have to pay for the giga factory so it does not make a too much difference on top of that packaging is a very critical aspect that's why um, basically uh, teslas are moving from 181650 to 2170 now you're like okay that battery is only little bit bigger but here's deep electrolytes in your cell gives you energy that's what you want but casing is like an insulator you do not want to pay for the insulator because again it's not adding it's just dead mass but you have to do that so if uh, you know your mathematics well enough you know if you want to increase the surface surface will generally go uh, let's say you are increasing diameter surface will go let's say per square but volume will go by per cube cube is directly proportional to basically the volume inside uh, which is translating to how much electrolyte you can put in it what does that mean that simply means per gram of steel you are you expending on casing you are improving your electrolyte efficiency which is giving you less uh, basically less bulky battery cheaper battery for once you start to think on all those front you're like yeah battery really is not just like oh lithium i removed lithium now it's cheap it does not work like that that's why even lead acid battery is not free it costs money and especially if you want deep cycle lead acid battery you would be surprised how expensive those puppies are so that's the reality. Do not think like, okay, it's going to come in, let's say, 2030 and it's going to be super cheap. No. At best case scenario, it will be running a bit behind the inflation. So the, uh, practically the cost may remain the same. However, my personal favorite part, if all things works out, it allows a large scale adoption. Now, I do not mean in terms of electric car. I do not think it has the oomph necessary for electric car. Maybe I am wrong. Maybe some different blend uh, you know, allows that oomph, that you know, drag racing kind of power. So far, I have not seen it. Maybe some other lab, and again, these things are top secret, so I do not know. However, in terms of uh, grid scale storage, these are quite amazing because this allows you to make 10 megawatt, 100 megawatt battery banks on cheap, and they can last for much longer. And, you know, inherent cost is cheap, so that could mean like hundreds of villages, hundreds of small towns could literally have a giant battery bank uh, and allowing us much higher adoption of renewable technologies. So that's the most amazing part for me. Like that's why I'm so excited about sodium ion battery. However, stay away from the damn hype. So this was my presentation on sodium ion battery. I hope you liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I'd urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.